My name is Cadet Robert Woody, Oak Island, North Carolina. I graduated from South Brunswick, so the team, you know, beat in sports all the time. <laughs> kind of unfortunate. But, uh, yeah, this is just a brief. I'm here to give about West Point and the admissions process. Like I said, I'm from Oak Island, North Carolina. I'm a nuclear engineering major at the school. So even if you don't want to go to West Point, I'm more than happy to talk to you about that. Plenty of places in North Carolina you can go to do it. <clears throat> so before we really get into the weeds of what West Point is, we want to talk about what it is that it can offer you. So every West Point graduate graduates with a bachelor's of science, which in today's world, that's extremely powerful. Every cadet is on full scholarship. That means that your tuition is paid for, room and board, meals, even your medical expenses. And every cadet also gets a stipend. As a plea, for a freshman, that's $200. As a sophomore, you get $250. As a junior, you get $475. And then as a first year, like me, you get $575. That's a month. So it's not too bad you can pay to go to college. Not many people can say they get that. Every graduate of West Point is a commissioned officer in the United States Army. So you don't have to worry about looking, looking for a job for at least five years, which you can ask a lot of current college graduates. That's a really big comfort to have. <clears throat> and also, we can give you a lot of the same accommodations that you'll get at a normal school. Obviously, it'll be very different. We have 29 varsity programs. So if you like football, if you like basketball, if you like rugby or soccer, West Point does have programs that you can pursue and try to play in. Also, every cadet gets the opportunity to take a career starter loan. For me, what that looked like, it was $37,000 at a 0.8% APR, which, as a senior in college, that's a phenomenal start that I'm going to have access to in my life. That 0.8% APR is basically free money, and you have a grace period until the end of your service that you can start paying for it. <clears throat> so once you get to West Point, they're going to try to refine you in four different ways. And it'll be the same for Naval Academy as well. First is academically. The academic program at West Point is extremely rigorous. Um, who knows how many credit hours some of their friends in college are taking right now? Hmm? Uh, it's probably about 12 or 15 <laughs> semesters. So my first semester at West Point, I took 24 credit hours. It's, it's rigorous. It's hard. It does get a little easier while you stay. They give you a little bit of grace, but it's not too bad. And this kind of this sharpening you get in an academic environment, it'll help you in other places. So that's why they do it. They also try to refine you physically. <clears throat> so every cadet has to pass a physical test. Do y'all think the Air Force is physical test in ROTC? It's similar. Uh, Air Force does a mile and a half. We do a one mile run. Okay. And we do push ups and sit ups. Okay. So what that physical test consists of, it's, it's, a, it's a three rep max deadlift, it's a weighted ball throw, hand release push ups, which kind of like push ups, but they're a little more difficult. A plank. A sprint drag carry with a weighted show or weighted uh, weighted sled, and then a two mile run. Is that the ACFT? Yes, sir. We've done that twice. When the Army National Guard has come out and brought the equipment set it up. And the kids enjoy it, and some of them exert themselves physically to the point of, uh, you know what? <laughs> well, too much. Zooming breakfast and stuff. So. <laughs> yeah, the ACFT, it's, it's fun. We don't do the two mile run at the end, though. I'm sure that's pleasurable. <laughs> oh, yeah. But at the same time, you'll take an actual Department of Physical Education physical curriculum while you're there. What that looks like is a plea to a freshman is you take military movement, which who in the audience thinks I would like a gymnast? Huh. <laughs> Thank you, but it's okay. Yeah, no, I, I didn't think it's something I'd be prepared for. You learn how to control your body in the oddest of ways, whether it's up on the high bars, learning how to spin, running an obstacle course, doing actual Olympic gymnastic events on a trampoline. It's, it's pretty interesting. That, the next year you'll take survival swim, which is where if you're not a great swimmer, you start off just in the water in a bathing suit, learning the basics. But regardless of skill, you work your way up to wearing your full OCPs, a weighted vest, carrying a rifle, wearing your boots, jumping off of a 10 meter high dive. It's, they prepare you, they prepare you to, have to be ready in the water. Then you also take boxing. Boxing is a fun class. I like that. I'm not going to explain that to it. And the year after that, you take combatives. And that's essentially wrestling, but it's learning how to wrestle inside of the Army's actual action. I actually, the guy who currently teaches it at West Point, Mr. Larson, wrote the Army's doctrine on how to, how to wrestle, basically. So it's cool getting to learn from him. And then as a first year, a senior, you get to take a lifetime sport. 
And that's where you pick up a skill and a sport that you'll be able to play for the rest of your life. So I personally took Olympic weightlifting, which I never thought I'd be able to snatch, but they taught me that. That, but you can take golf, basketball, soccer, they do swim, cycling, cross country. They've really got something for every flavor of person. They're going to try to refine you militarily while you're there. I'm sorry, I got a little track there. They, uh, every graduate is going to be a second lieutenant. And so you go through a four tiered, four year military refinement process, which we'll get more into that later. But they basically, through varying levels of responsibility, teach you to be accountable for yourself. And then you work all the way up to being accountable for large groups of people. Which that leadership experience is something that's going to serve you well in either the Army when you graduate or in the private industry whenever you choose to leave. They also choose or they try to refine your character. So there's a cadet honor code that we all try to live by. So cadet will not lie, cheat, steal, or tolerate those who do. Can anybody tell me why that might be important? We're good. That's like a creative That's like a creative design, something that you feel like something that you do. Yeah, it's something to live by, and it's something that other people know you'll live by. And so that kind of brand that you establish for yourself, it makes you seem reliable. It makes people know you're reliable, actually. And it's something that, whether it's going to be your bosses in the Army or your bosses in the private sector, are going to see and know, I can depend on this person because I know they're honorable, and I know they're going to do me right. So I'll let you look at the accolades that West Point has gotten from U.S. News, Forbes, and the Princeton Review. That's, that's pretty impressive as far as uh, as far as a uh, as far as public schools go. But what I'd really like to point you to are the number of Rhodes Scholars and the number of Marshall Scholars. So the Rhodes Scholarship is where, after your senior year, they'll send you free of, free of charge to Cambridge to get a world class education in England. So last year we were number one with uh, with four scholars. They usually send about twenty five. So this one institution accounted for about a sixth of the people who the United States government was choosing to send abroad to represent America. And the Marshall Scholarship or something similar, but yet again, last year we were number one in three. Yeah. So who in here is a Ravens fan, a Steelers fan, or a Duke fan? Mm. <laughs> 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 You're a Duke fan? I like, I like, I'm a Spanish but I don't like it. Yeah, what about Ravens or Steelers, anyone? Steelers. So you recognize the guy on the left? Who is he? Yeah, he was, he was an offensive lineman before he played for the Steelers for, uh, for 10 years, and then he finished his career with the Euro Ravens. That's Alejandro Villanueva. That's just one of West Point's famous graduates. But that guy on the bottom, Mike Krzyzewski, what's his biggest accolade? What is, what is he known for? He's accepted as the best coach ever in basketball history. Who? Oh, yeah. oh, oh, I have no idea. Go Heels, but. Yeah, he even huh. played basketball. Really? I had no idea. That's really interesting. You know, so he knows about basketball for sure, but one thing that has made him stand out as a coach is his ability to lead men. And this yeah, is, West Point is really the laboratory where he was able to figure out how to do that. Hmm. Then up top, you can see we have the second man on the moon as a West Point graduate, Buzz Aldrin. Cool. And anybody who's a military history geek like myself, you recognize Douglas MacArthur and Dwight Eisenhower, 34th President of the United States. Those are both West Point graduates as well. Okay. So your cadet life is going to look a lot different than what it would look like if you went to a normal college. I'm sure you talk to your buddies, you go to UNC, State, ECU. It's not really going to be that similar. So here's what your schedule is going to look like most days. I will say, outside of the summers, I usually wake up about 6.15. I don't let 520 scare you. <laughs> but you have a busy day. You'll be in class some days from 7 o'clock to 3 o'clock in the afternoon. It's rigorous, like we were talking about earlier. That in the afternoon from 4.15 to 6 o'clock, what you can see is a block of time called MacArthur's time. What that is, it's dedicated for cadets to actually develop yourself physically. So if you're a Division I athlete, you're going to practice. If you're a club athlete, if you play handball or something like that, you'd be going to, you'd be going to practice as well. But for people like myself, who are mainly just students, you either play your intramural sports, because every cadet is an athlete, or it's actual physical time carved out of your day you go to the gym, go on a run, work on yourself, which we actually greatly appreciate. That and after dinner is really when all that time is for yourself. What does that time look like? It's, you're gonna have your face in a poker type of way on a computer. The homework up there is 
pretty tough. It's, it's, it's no joke. As you can see, you do get some time at the end of the day for yourself. I watch Netflix just like all of you guys. <laughs> So here you can see kind of a model schedule for what cadets go through in their academic curriculum. Do Cleve and Yearling year? Or you saw yeah, go back one slide or if not, you can just I'll go see what time you went to bed. That's like 2400. So yeah. that's lights out, mandatory. No. Uh, it's not anymore. It used actually lights out used to be at zero one, but they had to get rid of that because. People got home. People were studying with flashlights, right? Yeah. That, that was me. <laughs> I had lights out back in the day, and I heard it there. two o'clock in the morning, I had uh, under my blanket on with a flashlight trying to ask. Yeah, so I sit on my desk like a normal person, but they always did everything they did. Gotcha, thank you. Yeah, so here's what your schedule's going to look like. Really, the point of the academic curriculum is to turn you from a generalist, where you get all of your general knowledge, because Army officers need to know what's going on in the world into a specialist with more of a focus in your major courses. As you can see, you don't really get into the weeds on your major until about your junior year. So as a nuclear engineer, I was sitting through English and history and philosophy, kind of building my general block of knowledge. And the same would be true with the Naval Academy. They do it the same way. That and also, every cadet who's not an engineering major takes an engineering sequence. What those look like right now are Systems engineering, environmental engineering, infrastructural engineering, or you can come with me as a nuclear engineer. So what they want is every cadet to have this broad base of knowledge. Like that also throughout the course of your academic career, you can take military leadership or military science courses. That's more or less just building on that foundational knowledge that you're going to need, and building on your leadership skills when you're actually an officer in the army. Anybody have any questions about the schedule? Any interesting questions? So, so one interesting thing for me, uh, I was came from a real small high school in North Carolina. Was not a stellar student. I struggled every day at West Point. But if you try Naval Academy two, if you try, they have a support system that will keep you in there. And that's at the bottom. Where it says eight to one student to faculty. That was so important. They have a lot of personal. One on one time, they help. They have so many systems there now to help you make it through. If you're having academic problems, mental problems, whatever personal problems, okay. it's a lot more. Oh yeah, I mean it's it's just. It's a, Is there a blend of military, active duty military, and civilian mm -hmm. faculty? There is. Yes, sir. It's uh, it's about 75-25. Yeah. It's about the ratio, I think we've got Military to civilian. Military to civilian. And so all of my, the majority of my teachers are uniformed service members. But I will say it is kind of refreshing to get the civilian perspective. Like I had a civilian, I, right now I'm in constitutional law, and I also took philosophy earlier on. We discuss things like the law of our armed conflict. And so in philosophy I had a civilian, and we were actually have really interesting and free conversations as to our difference in perspectives. The, uh, PMS at UNC Chapel Hill now is brand new. His name is Lieutenant Colonel Dan Hurd, I think it's Dan. He taught at West Point last year, the year before, I don't know if you knew him. But it was interesting, he earned a silver star in battle and several bronze stars, and he went to, they sent him to Yale and then brought him back to West Point to teach, and now he's at Chapel Hill as a professor of military studies. Which, that's a phenomenal record. I was impressed, so impressed with that. So the quality of that education is incredible. It is, and that is that is one thing. So all of, if you want to come back and teach at West Point, they send you to get a master's degree first. So being a physics and nuclear engineering major, I've had teachers go to some of the best STEM schools in the country, MIT, the University of Michigan, even North Carolina State. If y'all don't realize how good of an engineering school that is, I've had teachers who go there. Yeah. So I'll give you guys a minute to kind of look over your list of majors up here. They've really got a flavor for every academic interest you might have. A lot of people come and they think, well, West Point actually used to be just an engineering school, basically. Everyone graduated with a generic bachelor's of science and engineering. But really, they branched out. So I, myself, am a nuclear engineering major. I room with a data science and operations research major and a sociology major. So there really is a pretty broad variety of 
whatever academic interest you think you might find yourself wanting to pursue. I believe West Point has one of the largest academic major selections of the other service academies. Maybe the highest. Do you know? I, I mean, I've heard it's the largest. I think it's maybe the sure highest. The 36. Yes, sir. And so while you're developing yourself academically, you're also learning to develop yourself militarily. And so this is kind of that tiered process I was talking about earlier. The first thing you get through is you get that basic training in six weeks the summer before you get there. And what that looks like is you're learning to become accountable for yourself. You learn the basic skills that a soldier might need to have. It's definitely not nearly as intensive as armor basic training might be in terms of that individual skill development. Mm -hmm. But it's really where you learn to take care of yourself. Then you go through cadet field training the year after. That's really your first rep at leadership that you're going to get. In the Army, squads are made up of teams. And this is where you learn how to lead a team. So I had five people who I was responsible for. We were running around in the woods practicing our soldier skills. And honestly, that's, that's a blast. You got to camp Buckner for four weeks. And it's, it's a really good time. Then after that, your summers become a lot less structured and a lot more individualized. So the first 